Good morning everybody, this is Lara from Pure Elliott Wave with your Monday to Friday update for Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP and Solana. I'm adding in now because we're getting rid of the Elliott Wave for Ethereum because you now have to get that from our website if you want it and you can get it if you want it. There are links below. Yesterday Bitcoin had a really nice strong upward session. It had an increase in range and it had a nice push from volume so for the short term this is bullish. I expect it's reasonably likely that the low of 1st of May for Bitcoin is likely to remain intact for the long term. I am expecting an upward breakout from the rectangle sooner rather than later. Well, look, let's be honest, I'm hoping for it to be sooner rather than later, but it could still be a couple of weeks or so away. This consolidation has been taking so long and it really is testing our patience. But what it does look like is a consolidation within an ongoing upward trend and it does not look like a new bearish market. Although we have some bear candlestick patterns at highs, we don't have strong downward movement with five wave structures and upward movement with three wave structures. What we do have is downward movement with three wave structures and again from here to here this is a three wave structure this is a corrective movement again if you want my Elliott wave analysis of Bitcoin you can get it from my website there are links in the description box down below this is a rectangle in classic technical terms it is either a continuation or reversal pattern when a rectangle occurs in the context of an upward trend it is two-thirds likely to break out upward so on balance of probability an upward breakout in classic terms alone is more likely than not we need to see a break above this resistance zone, 73,100, 71,500 on an upward session which closes above resistance with push from volume for us to have confidence. Rectangles often have false breakouts though so I would like to see another upward session move up and away after an upward breakout to have confidence that it's not just a false breakout. We did have a false breakout down here of previous support which was 60,700 and then price very quickly returned back to within the consolidation so this is a nice example of a false breakout and after that I've had to expand the support zone of this rectangle. Yesterday's upward session has a really nice increase in volume and range. There is quite a lot of support for that upward movement. That's bullish and I expect that upward movement is going to continue at least to resistance. There is a weak bullish signal from on balance volume breaking above this resistance line which I think we could probably count three tests if we count this one. I think these are a bit too far away to be considered a test. ADX is now increasing telling us yes there is an upward trend in a relatively early stage. This is not the strongest signal ADX can give though because it hasn't risen up from below both DX lines nor from below 15 but it is a reasonably strong bullish signal. So the daily time frame an upward trend is now indicated. RSI is not overbought nor is money flow and ADX is a very long way from extreme so there's a long long way for this upward trend if it is indeed a new upward trend to continue before it reaches danger territory. A little bit of an increase in range for yesterday but overall as price has been moving sideways in the rectangle range volatility has been declining. That's really normal behaviour during a consolidation. Very quickly technicals as well for Ethereum it has resistance at 3200 and support at 2720. Yesterday's session completes with an increase in range and a slight increase in volume. We need to see a break above resistance or below support for Ethereum to have confidence in the next direction of the next trend. Around these lows a bit above 2720 there are three bullish reversal patterns, piercing pattern here, dragonfly doji here and a very strong hammer candlestick. That suggests that these lows may be likely to be sustained. A slight increase in volume yesterday beyond the previous downward session, not as clear as Bitcoin, but there is a slight bullishness there. On balance volume is at resistance today. If we see a red candlestick for the 16th of May, we're going to have another pivot, another test of this yellow resistance line. If we see a green candlestick for the 16th, then we'd have a bullish signal. I think it looks like we're going to have a red candlestick and another pivot form here. ADX is declining. There's no clear trend for Ethereum. And so using a model of stochastics plus support and resistance, we would expect stochastics Plastics neared oversold and price was pretty close to support. Now price is moving higher, 
Bayer Stochastics is moving higher, I'll expect overall an upward swing from price toward resistance at 3,200, if not above, and Stochastics to continue higher to get close to or reach overbought simultaneously. And if they reach that simultaneously, depending on what ADX says, that may be the end of the upward swing and the start of a downward swing. But if they get up there and ADX says there's an upward trend, then I'd expect that to continue. The Elliott Wave analysis for XRP remains the same. I see a double combination complete for an intermediate degree second wave correction. On the 13th of April, where RSI reached oversold, doesn't tend to do that commonly. So that's a little bit of support from classic analysis, which expects intermediate two could be complete here. Zigzag for W, X, expanded flat for Y. One zigzag, one flat correction are the two most common structures within double combinations. Just a note about triples, one of the things that I use to identify good quality Elliott Wave work online from just rubbish that you just need to step away from and don't waste your time with is the use of WXYXZ. Triple zigzags should have a strong counter trend slope and they're labelled WXYXZ. They're not very common but they're not especially rare. However, triple flats and triple combinations in my experience and my research are extremely rare. I think I've only ever seen one or two. They also are labelled W, X, Y, X, Z and they are sideways movements. They should not have a counter trend slope. Far too much work online calling itself Elliott Wave uses a lot of WXYXZ in its labelling and furthermore they'll label within W or Y or Z when there is one they'll label those WXYXZ as well multiples within multiples. There is an Elliott wave rule that states the maximum number of corrective structures in a multiple is three. If you label multiples within multiples you increase that maximum beyond three and violate the Elliott wave rule that is one of the most ignored and misunderstood rules of all Elliott wave rules. Furthermore, the use of WXYXZ liberally in any analysis tells you that the analyst isn't doing good quality Elliott Wave work because of the rarity of those structures. And so the other thing that that tells us is it's extremely likely if I have my labelling of Intermediate 2 correct, it's extremely likely for it to be complete because for it to continue sideways as a triple, the rarity of that structure means the probability of that is extremely low. The probability of the double combination being complete is much higher if I have this labelling here correct and it does have a pretty good foot fit and it does have a reasonable look. And here and ends my Elliott Wave lesson for today. Moving on to technicals for XRP, still finding resistance 54.55 cents, support 49 to 46 cents. Late, lately, support tested at 49 cents has held. Yesterday's session is complete, upward movement with a small increase in volume, so slightly bullish, not as clear as Bitcoin, but still bullish. I'll look for resistance to be broken at 54.55 cents and for price to move up and away from that before I have real confidence that we've got a short term upward breakout. But it does look likely that the April 13th low is most likely to be sustained for the long term. Recent strongest volume is on upward sessions for the short term. XRP has a bullish volume profile. No breakout from on balance volume yet, but I'm keeping an eye on this range looking for a signal. ADX is declining telling us there's no clear trend. RSI reached oversold on the 13th of April. A model of stochastics plus support and resistance because there is no trend as indicated by ADX would expect an upward swing for price to reach resistance about 54.55 cents and stochastics to continue higher maybe not to get all the way up to overbought but maybe just to get above the halfway mark because that's what's happened in the last three tests of resistance. But overall an upward swing toward resistance would be expected from that model. The main daily Elliott Wave count for Solana sees a five wave impulse complete to this low and if this is correct as a five wave impulse and it does have a good look as a five that means the correction I'm labelling here primary wave four cannot be complete there because corrective structures do not subdivide as fives or with the exception of a triangle that's totally different look to this. This is an impulse. So if this is an impulse it's only wave A within primary four. Now I have a question mark about B. It could be complete here or it could continue higher. Impossible to say where it could end. B waves just they're just the worst. They exhibit the greatest variety in Elliott wave structure and price behavior. They're a nightmare to try and analyze so you've got to be really open-minded and flexible with them. What I would do is draw a channel around B like this. If we have a full red daily candlestick below and not touching this trend line I would then label this correction complete and intermediate wave C to complete primary wave 4. I would then expect it to be underway and then when I have confidence of where B has 
presented, I'd use a Fibonacci ratio between A and C to try and calculate a target for primary 4. For now I'll leave it at the log function of the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio at 114.76 in a bit. What if the correction was complete here? Will it subdivide as a complete corrective structure? Yes, possible. This is a double combination though, and like I showed you on XRP, that's a pretty good looking double combination. It's got a sideways movement, but this one does not look right. It's got a strong counter trend slope. That's because X is brief and shallow and Y hasn't reached up to the highs of W. So the whole thing has a counter trend slope. That's not what a combination should look like. However, I always like to try and consider an alternate. What if we are going to see upward breakouts from Solana? This would be how I would label the fourth wave complete down here. Very quickly, technicals for Solana. It too is consolidating with resistance at 159 and support at 118. We need to see a breakout of this range in order to have confidence in the next direction for price. Yesterday's session for Solana was a red candlestick, the day before a green candlestick with a little bit of an increase in volume. Most recent strongest volume for Solana is on upward sessions but they're not increasing day on day as price moves higher. So a little bit of a cause for concern there for a bullish case. On balance volume is at resistance. If we get a red candlestick for the 16th, we're going to get another pivot, another test of resistance. If we get a green candlestick, we'll have a reasonable bullish signal. Not strong because this yellow resistance line has a reasonable slope but it does have multiple tests and it is long held so that would be a reasonable signal so I'll be watching that one for you tomorrow carefully. Someone asked a question about ADX so I'll answer this here using Solana as an example. The black ADX line tells you is there a trend or not when it has a positive slope and is above 15 when those two conditions are met the ADX line tells you there is a trend. The red and the green lines are the DX lines. The red line is the negative DX line. The green line is the positive DX line. When ADX tells us there's a trend, then whichever of these DX lines is above the other tells us what direction the trend is. And so back here, ADX has a positive slope and it's above 15. The negative DX line is above the positive DX line. Back here, ADX told us there was a downward trend. Back here, ADX had a positive slope and it was above 15. The positive DX line was above the negative DX line. ADX tells us there is an upward trend. Currently today there is a very slight positive slope. The negative DX line is above the positive DX line. The black ADX line is above 15 with a positive slope. ADX today tells us there is a downward trend. That's your basic introduction to how to use ADX but there are a few more things to know. When ADX comes from below 15 and rises up from low levels and rises from below both DX lines as it did back here, once it reaches 15 with a positive slope that is the strongest signal ADX can give. In this case the positive DX line was above the negative so ADX was telling us there is an upward trend in a very early stage. This is a very very strong bullish signal from ADX. When the black ADX line is above both DX lines it tells us the trend is extreme. When the black ADX line is above 45 it tells us the trend is extreme. When both of those conditions are met above both DX lines and above 45 it tells us the trend is very extreme. Now that guide of 45 you might need to go back and look at ADX and the history of it with your particular market and try and identify looking at past behaviour, when previous trends reached very extreme, how high did ADX reach? Because for cryptocurrencies, 45 might be a little bit too low. We could even push that up to 50 or 55. And the final thing to know about ADX, it is bound between 100 and 0. So there is a limit. It's not infinite. It can only reach 100. And here ends my lesson on ADX because someone asked me to go over there. If you have any other questions about any of these indicators I'm using or techniques or methodology, methodologies I'm using, please do ask me in comments and I'll cover those in future videos just to try and be less boring while the market's in this consolidation. When ADX tells us we're trending, I'm using a model of ADX plus RSI and money flow to try and figure out what stage of the trend the market may be in. Today ADX is above both the DX line so it tells us there is a downward trend but it's already extreme and at previous lows RSI didn't reach oversold but it does exhibit bullish divergence so I will have a little bit of doubt that there really is a downward trend with much further to go. However RSI is neutral so there's quite a way to go before it reaches oversold. Money flow also is neutral there's a way to go before it reaches oversold. If there is a sustained downward trend there's 
quite a long way to go before it reaches as extreme it can get as it can get and before RSI and money flow get near oversold. And that's it from me today with your update. I hope everyone's having a lovely day.